Hello, my fellow vigilantes. I'm your host, Omega's Batman, and welcome to the channel. Uh, we have my new setup. We have a few Funko Pops, a few Blu ray movies, and a Batman mask. And we have a Trinity with Batman in front. <laughs> So Lola Rona is about this woman who had a boyfriend and her boyfriend cheated on her with, with another woman and she got really upset and she decided to kill both of their children in the nearest pond or nearest lake and after she killed both of their children she felt so much guilt she killed herself and drowned herself in the lake and her spirit lives still lives within the lake that's what the story says and if anyone who happens to run across that same area where she drowned herself will hear her cry and if you can hear her cry nearby that means she's far away but if you hear her cry in the, from a distance that means she's right next to you after she's right next to you she kills you or drags you to the nearest pond or lake and she drowns you because she wants you to replace one of the children she happened to kill and la Llorona is pretty much like hispanics boogeyman for kids and that same story is particularly is the same plot of this movie but the curse of the Lonorona is affecting this family, and this family hasn't survived the entire movie. Going into this film, I was had a little bit of anticipation because this film was within the Conjuring universe, and I'm a huge fan of the Conjuring universe. And I, even though I wasn't a fan of the last film, The Nun, I thought there is still potential. We still have The Crooked Man coming out very soon. After watching this film at a pre-screening, I thought this film had potential. And this film had potential. It, it it had potential. That Michael Chavez really did a good job of directing this film. There were some really good camera angles. There was this one part of this whole entire movie where there was this one creepy scene. And it was a long one shot. Basically the camera follows this character throughout each room. And the, the whole entire scene gets creepier and creepier. And all this is like one shot. There are no cuts, no edits. Nothing. Just, there is some particular jump scares that kind of work in this film, but the way they use these jump scares, one of the main issues of this movie, I'll get to that in a second. The performances in this movie were okay, I would say. There is a character, a priest that makes an appearance in this movie, or is he a priest, or he's, or is he like a supernatural wannabe of the Warrens. He was being played by Raymond Cruz. I thought his character, his performance was okay. His character is a little bit cartoony, a little bit zany at times, and his method is a detriment to the family. There's times in this movie where he constantly will put the family in harm's way just to try to get the ghost. The performance this was just all right. There wasn't really a performance I got attached to. And it was the same issue I had with The Nun. But with The Nun, their jump scares was cliche. But with La Llorona, their jump scares weren't cliche. Their jump scares were creative, but their timing of the jump scares was a cliche. Everything comes around full circle and the jump scares were creative and there was moments where they did no a no sound build up the similar style that James Wan did and the main thing that really ripped this movie to shreds was the writing man. Oh my god the writing. That had nothing to do with the script the movie. The script was fine. This just the writing of character choices in this movie was just really just terrible to the point of absurdity. I wouldn't believe that a mother who would see a scar on her own daughter. And that type of scar that you see is not a particular scar that a regular child should be having, and yet you mistake it as a sprain. So, oh, the main character who's, who played Velma in Scooby-Doo, she was a, her character was very stupid and make an illogical decision. But the main thing about it, that these illogical choices were in this film, just so we can have a movie. It happened in the beginning of the film, and I am right when it happened. My mind literally left my brain. I felt like getting hit by the ancient one, where boom, my soul just went out my body right at that scene. Because if that didn't happen, we wouldn't have a movie. Pretty much decisions of each character really ha had to be made illogically because we had need to had this movie for over one hour and 30 minutes. The performance of La Llorona, she was creepy, she was scary, so I have to give a good, uh, you know, high five. Yeah, good job, pat on the back. The film did do a good job of giving us creepy imagery. There was a scene or two where I actually scared my ass off a little bit, but I feel like Michael Chavez did a really good job directing this movie, but 
the writing was just very terrible. Pretty much like ripped this movie to shreds. You can see his intestines, you can see his organs all over the floor and all that. And it's just really a gory scene. La La Rona will entertain you in some ways and also it will frustrate you in some ways. Um, it, it's not really a movie I recommend going seeing, but if you happen to happen to see on, on a Sunday, go ahead and go see it. I wouldn't recommend paying full price of admission because the most important movie comes out next week, which is the end game. I think you should save your $10 or save your $5 and go use that money or save that money for a ticket to see end game next week. I'm going to give La La Rona a value for Batman. This is a guilty pleasure. Thank you for watching. I want you guys to hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And if you like everything you see and you agree, subscribe to my channel and join me in the Batman family. I'll have more Batman-tastic views in the way. And I will have my Kingdom Arts video coming up next. And I can't wait for you guys to hear it. Ciao. Lonely sprinting for a couple days. My rainbow light is memories. My second heart, the persona on rocks his body and range from the internal flames. Ventus trying to throw shade. Starlight is my first name. Come with the nick with the blade. I'm like Gillette with the shades. I got that key.